Hi everyone, it's Deborah. Welcome back to my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, then do so now so that you don't miss out on all my videos. Today is going to be something completely different. I've not done this before, so we'll see how it goes. And I, hopefully it's gonna turn out. I've got my fingers crossed. So what I'm going to attempt to make today is a bit of an art piece or it could be used, I can uh, add it onto the front of one of my journals. It could be a page in one of my junk journals. And as I said, it could be an art piece that goes into my art book or even hangs on the wall. You could frame it. So I've got just a piece of fabric, which I didn't even iron, as you can see. And I've just torn a piece off. It's a very, very pale yellow. I wanted a cream. I didn't have any cream that I was willing to chop into for this experiment. So I've gone with yellow and I think that's going to be okay because I'm going to cover most of it. And I think the yellow coming through at the top and the bottom might be nice. So the attempt is to do some sort of maybe a landscape, I'm thinking, or a seascape. I just don't know. I've surrounded myself with lots of materials in pinks and greens and browns and creams, a bit of white all different things that I thought might be nice to have. I've even got a bit of purple in here because you know I love purple. So this is all sort of scraps from quilting, scraps from making journals, all sorts of different things like that. So the size of it is going to be about this big, which I think is roughly going to be about five by seven, maybe eight. I haven't measured it, but I'm just gonna do it. And then when I've done it, I'll cut it down if I need to, if I don't like it. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be stitching on my machine. So first of all, I'll tell you about that while I get started. So I'm going to start with like a sky here, some sort of blue le lemon, this yellowy lemony colour I've got coming through because the sky to me has all those colours in it. I've even got some pink here. Let me just grab, I did have some blue. There's some blue, oh and that's more green. So I want to try and, you know, mimic some clouds and some sky. Let's get some other things here. What about this? This is like a creamy, frilly piece of lace. I have this in a number of colours. I thought maybe that might be good for a bit of a cloud sort of thing. So I'll chop some of that off and see if I can make that look like a cloud. Maybe not. This is just about experimenting and having fun today. So you're not going to see this video until after Christmas, but I'm actually making it on Christmas Eve, well, Christmas Eve during the day, I think. This is what it is at the moment here. So this is going to be like cloud. I need some blue. I don't have a lot of blue. That's about my downfall because I'm not really a blue girl. I'm a green, you know, green and pink and purple girl, but I must have something in here that I can use for a blue. Actually, the other thing I could do, I could even paint that blue, couldn't I? Yeah, I've got this bit of cream. This is actually a cream rather than the yellow. I could actually paint some blue in that. So I'm going to tear some of this. I will need some scissors. Let's just chop that and see if we can get this torn. Now, I have ordered an arm, so I'll be able to sit at the machine and sew and show you what I'm doing. I don't have that yet, but I didn't want to delay making this because I thought I wanted to have a bit of fun. So it's going to be a bit of a bit of an experiment, bit of a hodgepodge happening here today. There's a bit more of that sort of colour. Tear a bit of that off and that might look good as a bit of sky as well. So what gave me the inspiration to try this? Well, First of all, I just really admire people who can slow stitch. I'm not one of those people. I've tried it before, it's been a dismal failure. I just don't have the patience for slow stitching. And there are a couple of other things that I saw. One was on Portrait Artist of the Year, which I love, and I just watched one of their shows the other day and saw this woman who was making a landscape with textile and sewing it on the machine. And I thought, well, that's not slow stitching. I must be able to do that. So that's again why I thought that I would try it. And when I went looking, there actually are a couple of really good artists out there doing it. Now, I don't have their names to hand right now,
but I will put them in the description below. So make sure that you check that description out if you're looking for the names of those other artists that I'm talking about so that you can go and have a look what they do. I want to bring a bit of this pink in because I think skies often have pink. In fact, skies have all sorts of colours in them. And I like the sky when it's got some pink through it. I'm wondering if this will tear. No, it's not going to tear. This is sort of like an organza ribbon, but it's got a stiff edge, not a... Um, it's not a wired edge, it's just a stiff ripply edge and it's really pretty. But I did want to sort of put some pink through it to see if that would work. But because I can't tear that, I might cut it down a little bit more. But what I'll do is I'll take it and cut it like this. So the other reason for doing this is that I've got a fantastic sewing machine that I've had for a few years now and it's got these wonderful embroidery stitches on it and I rarely use them because I don't embroider. So I thought why not do this and use some of these stitches on top so that I can see if I can make anything that might, you know, that I might like. Now I was playing with this before and I meant to tell you that that is sari silk. It comes in this really twisted roll that's really sort of all together but when you undo it, it just bursts out like this. So you end up with this big sort of mass of sari silk to play with, which is just lovely. I only cut a bit more of that, actually. The widths are different. If you want to pull it out, you see, that's sort of that wide. And then I've got pieces in here that are much wider. I like where you get the joins, like this bit here. That's just lovely. In fact, I might chop that bit off. You don't have to chop from the end. You can chop at any point. You may end up with a little bit at the end at some point, but I don't really mind. So I'm just going to try and unfold that and sew it down. Now, some of the people that I was watching do this, they actually get it and they glue their things down, but I don't want to do that. I just thought I'd just wing it and go to the machine and sew it, which is why I've ordered an arm so that you can see the sewing that I'm doing. So the next time, if there is a next time that I do this, you should be able to watch as I sew along and hopefully that'll give you a better indication of what I'm doing. But you should get something out of today's video, I do hope so. I'm going to go and start sewing this now and see where I get to and then come back and we'll keep, keep going. Actually, just before I do that, I think I'm going to take this piece here. So this is just a piece of lace, but I like this top bit. I'm going to cut that top bit off and lay it underneath everything so I can create some texture and some layers and also to hide some of this background fabric a bit more so I'll have a base. So I'm basically going to put this here like this and then I'll start laying that stuff over the top again. I definitely want this one to show like that. Let's grab a pin and pin some of this. That might help keep it in place while I'm sewing. I don't use my pins much anymore since I went to the quilt clips, which is good because it means I don't stick myself with pins all the time, which is pretty much what I used to do. But in this instance, I'm going to have to pin. Where's that other bit here? I really like that torn edge that I've got there. I can put that there. So I'm just trying to work out where I'm going to put things. I definitely want a cloud to go through here. So we'll pin a cloud on there. I mean, it doesn't look like a cloud now, but I'm really hoping it will mimic a cloud. I'm not doing a realism sort of thing. I'm just doing something that is going to mimic, hopefully, what I've been talking about. I'm going to put a bit of pink here under that cloud too, over the top of the one below, but underneath the cloud so that I can catch that when I'm sewing. I've also got that, that probably would have been better for the cloud. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take that one off and change my mind about my cloud. And I'm gonna put this one on instead because it's a bit more cloud-like, I think. And this is just a bit of ribbon that I bought that's got all these bits sewn on it, but you could make your own. I just bought this as is, you can see. It was just easier. I saw it and thought I'll just grab a, a metre of that or whatever I bought at the time. 
to make a bit of a cloud here. That's quite nice. Okay, so I have to fiddle with that when I get to the machine. I might just go and do that bit for now and then we can assess where we're up to. Okay, I've sewn those all down and I think that's looking okay. I think I'm not gonna tell until, you know, I'm kind of finished it. I found some blue just in one of my quilt box things. I found some blue and it's a bit blue blue, but I think I could put maybe something over the top. I'll just cut it and rip it and then we'll see if it's gonna be any good. Oh, it's hard to rip, there you go. It's got a little pinked edge on it, but I can hide that pinked edge. Like maybe put the blue down here. Definitely need to cut that bit of white off the end. And then I can put the blue I might turn it back the other way because that's a bit more of what I'm going for really soft rather than the darker color that I've got on that side so that's good I can use the back side of it I think there maybe here under this cloud I can put some blue on top of that pink like that where's my pins here I haven't done any embroidery stitching yet. All I've done is just straight stitching. And I'm just using the color that I normally use for all of my quilting projects. It doesn't matter what color the quilt is. I use the same color for all my quilting projects, which is a Rosant thread. And I think it's 3000, but again, I will put the link below so that you can check it out if you're thinking that you want to use that thread. It's a really neutral sort of it's a brown but it's a really really light sort of cream brown and it goes with everything i never have a problem with it looking a bit weird on the quilts that i've done even if it's a dark background you know dark um the back of the quilt is dark it just seems to be able to fade into it so i always use it i have all the bobbins threaded up so that i don't have to worry when i stop and have to refill a bobbin i do them all at once so i have like 15 bobbins I've got a box of bobbins that I use that have just filled up ready to be used actually I quite like how that's fraying I was trying to tear it and it wouldn't tear so I quite like that it's fraying like that but I don't like that end at all but I'll put that off into the side I do need some blue up here in this part of the sky don't I probably a bit more blue than what I've got there I'll get that little scrap that I tore off before and just pop it into here. If I tuck that underneath, it should look better. If I put it under there, I definitely need something down here, some sort of a blue. I was going to go with the floral, but I'm not sure. Let me just try the flower. Again, I could put it at the back. No, I think I'm going to stick with this, this little bit that I've got here. Just a thin bit. If you've got scraps, this is going to be a really good way to use them up. And I'll put that again, just, or maybe I'll put that just over the top of that pink to have this sort of streak of blue through that sky. So it's pretty easy to sew, it, you know, it only took a couple of minutes to sew that down. Now at some point, I wanna go from the sky to the horizon which I think is going to be pretty soon. I'm quite liking that. And also the other thing is that it's going to look really much better when it's framed up. It's the same when you do a watercolour, you put the masking tape around and never looks that good. And you take the masking tape off and you have this frame and it looks really great. So I might have to find a frame so I can show you how that's going to look. I think I do need a little bit more blue under this sky at the top. Let me just see if I need that. Not sure about that little bit there yet. I might actually pop that bit in here like that. So it's just like doing stuff with paper really, only you're using fabric instead to create a picture. So now I think I'm going to put a little bit, let's just pop this under the cloud, or my pretend cloud. 
and see if that looks any good underneath that cloud. Does that look? Yeah, I think I definitely need something under that cloud. Again, I'm going to chop it a bit because it's a bit too thick. And here's all that sky on now. It's starting to look a bit like a sky, I think. <laughs> Maybe I'm delusional, but I quite like it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm having fun and I'm creating and that's what art is all about. So now I want to go to some mountains and I definitely want to have some dark. So hence my purple because there's nothing that says mountains like a dark purple. So I'm just cutting a shape that's meant to be looking a bit like a mountain. I might put that one off on that side because I've got the blue sky ending there. And I will cut a smaller one. And then in front of that, I need something that's going to be, you know, lighter. So I hope to have something I could put on there. Let's see. Maybe this lace. Sure, let's pull a bit of this off and see if it's going to work for me. Actually, I might put some green on here so that you're starting to get the green of the grass coming down. That might look nice too. Is what you need is you need sort of like a flat horizon to start on where the ground starts. So I think that's going to be perfect actually. So there are my hills and this is my horizon line, which is kind of straight. It's not so straight, but it is kind of straight. And afterwards, I'm going to come back with some decorative stitching to create some tree lines on the hills and also on that piece there, I think. So I've got a bit of that wadding, batting, wadding, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to cut it so that I can put it across, so I can put a fence on it later. After I've sewn everything down. And I really like this ribbon because the top of it reminds me of Boo Bells. So I'm going to somehow incorporate some of this into it as well. under there like that maybe I know I've still got to find something for that empty spot there now I wanted to kind of get some more texture in here maybe by folding that over like that but I've left my pins at the machine so I'll go and get them and I might put something like that down there and I do need to potentially although that should be all right if I sew that down like that that one's looking a bit too straight as well isn't it so I might just catch some of this up and put something behind it first so that I've don't have just you know that raw edge that underneath bit showing 
I might put some of this behind it actually. That might look quite cute like that, poking up. And put this down here like that. Okay, I'll go and do that bit too, I think. I've tucked a few more of this in and also my little bluebells in into some of those gaps that I was experiencing. As I folded this over, it was just showing some gaps and I thought that I'll fill them up with, you know, my bluebells. I don't know, I could finish it there actually. It doesn't have to be all the way down, although I think I would like to put something down the front here. If I could find some, maybe this and finish it off down here with some of that. Although maybe, let me just tuck it under. Mm. I think it needs to be longer. I think I do have to do this piece down the front. The other thing I was thinking is that maybe if I put some of this in or if I can find a smaller one, it'll look a bit like lavender in the hills. So if I could sort of double up and get little snippets of that that lovely purple is going to tie in with that purple too, isn't it? So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll just chop some up and put it on there too. I do need something solid for down the front here. Oh, I've got this. What about this? This is a pre-made piece, although you could make this yourself again. But I like that. How does that look? It's like the finishing touch. That's going to be it. And then we're going to use that bit down the front here and also a couple more snippets of purple throughout. Maybe a little bit like up here, a bit up here with the other purple. So I've got some references through it, at least two more pieces of purple. And that's going to be kind of like the finishing touch down the bottom here. So this is what I've done so far. I've added some more rows of stitching in here. And I've also found one pin. I'll have to go and find some more. So that's just one of those, you know, old fashioned nail head pins. I don't really use them anymore. I know you can still buy them though, but I've probably got a whole heap in a drawer somewhere. And I've just pushed that into there. And then I'm going to create that and do some black thread. I'll have to change my thread, of course. Do some black thread to create like a row of um, the fence here with the fence palings being the pins. So I have to find those. And I think that that's probably plenty for today. So I will come back next time and hopefully finish it off. And give me your thoughts on whether or not you think this is cool. I mean... You've got to wait till it's framed up but you know I'd like some feedback how do you think I'm going so far I also need to get some purple I do have some purple thread and create the trees or black even up here and I will create some other sort of texture and stuff with my different embroidery threads and hopefully by then I will have my new filming arm so that you can see me do that and I can talk you through what I'm doing as I said I've never done this before it's a first for me but I'm quite enjoying it and I quite like how we're going at the moment. So thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next time. This is Deborah. Cheers.